We're back here at On The Mat. I love On The Mat. Oh, oh, oh no, it's Jimmy Snuka. Oh, hey ladies, I'm gonna kill you with a center block. Oh, hey. Hey. hey, another great collectible there, Billy Whack. Look at this, yeah, this, this Jimmy Snuka, Madison Square Garden Main Events Volume 2, signed by Jimmy Snuka. Can you nice. imagine? Wow, look at that, yeah, where are we at here? Nickel Sage could probably got that signed himself. And it's weird, he almost looks like he's naked. Can you imagine Nicholas H waiting in line all day, going up to just his, his knees knopping, you Nicholas know, just H shaking to death, shuffling around in line, yeah. shuffling, and then he finally gets up. <laughs> Hee haw, Mr. Snooker, can you, can you? Can you <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're back here and having a bit of fun. And hey, a, uh, indeed, a barn burner of a match. When do you get to see a cage match on on the mat featuring Randy Savage? Yeah, that was some rock 'em sock 'em action there, Billy Nick's, Wack. Props to Nick and yeah. and or Chris. I don't know who found yeah, that. Yeah, Chris does all the work. Yeah, he does. Referring to Chris a, Hedford, Nick's son. Gym. Awesome. Our in camera, our in uh, house switcher, switching from camera to camera, doing a fine job. <laughs> hey, uh, wait a minute here. We got now share. We got these old mag magazines here tonight, guys. We got Vern Gagne's Dino Power ad from back in the day. Look at that. Now share Vern Gagne's method of keeping weight down, strength, and energy up, especially in the old folks' home. Wow! I didn't believe I said that. Wow! I get in trouble for that. Oh. But Dino Power. I remember we used to sell this on on the uh, Bob Loose Wrestling. There'd be a commercial. He'd get in there and he'd beat up a rookie. And Vern Gagne used to sell the Dino Power. It's probably that, pretty good, safe stuff. I wonder what that is. I wonder what the recipe for that is, and how it, like, if you know, if you were given that today, like, how much of it would it take to equal up to like one? Probably serving? just like a Shackley product or something like that. Just good old fashioned energy. Just you like vitamins? creatine, something that's legal, something that's going to go under the radar, something that's not going to get you thrown out of the promotion. Right. Something that's not going to give you a back knee. Ooh. Don't want back that. knee. Back knee. You know, back knee's the worst of our problems nowadays, Billy <laughs> Wack. I got to tell you. Because something else I've noticed. What happened to body hair? Back in the day, look at these guys. You got the Dominic DiNucci. Look at that. He's a hairy son of a gun. Look at that. Dominic wow. DiNucci. We got uh, Bruno San Martino. Look at rug okay? of Bruno and San I don't know Martino. if I'm allowed to hold this up or not, but then you look at WrestleMania. Look at these bodies at WrestleMania. There ain't a hair on a one of them. Not even a big show. He's practically clean shaven. Mark Henry, I think they had to wax his whole back for this picture. I mean, look at that. There is no hair left in professional wrestling. I think it's an evolutionary thing, Billy Wack. From what I understand, our noses are getting smaller and our bodies are becoming less hairy. I think it's because we're starting to look like the aliens. The Roswell aliens. Their noses are gone. They're like rail thin. They've got those big heads and those bulbous eyes. Is I that, think that's what's happening. Evolution. Is that kind of like those nuclear mutants in, uh, beneath the planet of the apes? Yes. Where they take off their face and they're skinless? That's yes. scary. I don't want to be skinless. Think about it. it, it, it if you look at uh, what, 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 we don't need our appendix so much anymore and like stuff I've like that. There are, there are problems with the human body. I don't know why. I don't know how we even got off of this from the chest here. But anyway, yeah, evolution is taking a hold. It's time for a change, as B Peter Brady used to say. We have a tailbone, but no tail. Yeah. What? We've also got a match tonight coming from Chicago, some Chicago wrestling. We have got Bobby Heenan with the Blackjacks, Lanza and Mulligan, taking on Little Bruiser, Dick the Bruiser, and the Crusher. Yes, Milwaukee's own the Crusher, Billy Wack. Wow. 1968. From that, well, well from 19, from 19, thank you, Nicholas H. Jesus. That, that was negative five or something. That was negative six at that point. Great wrestling. Nicholas H. thinks this one comes from Indianapolis. That would have been a WWA event, which was Dick the Bruiser's own promotion that he ran. A lot of people don't know that Dick the Bruiser ran Indianapolis. Vern kind of ran all the way through, and then we had Bob Loose wrestling here in Bob Chicago. Loose. Remember Bob Loose? Oh, I don't. I don't. He was I, a cool I dude. Was... You used to see him. You'd see him. He'd have these Ben's Auto Sales commercials they'd do every week, and then you'd go to the match at the Civic Center or the Amphitheater, and Bob Loose would be in the box office to sell you a ticket. Wow. It was kind of cool. Wait, and he sold cars, too? No, they had Ben's Auto Sales was the sponsor. That was oh, a big sponsor. Okay. And the wrestlers would do commercials for it. Okay. And they had this place called the Stockyard Inn that housed the old Wrestling Hall of Fame. This is the part of the show where Nicholas H. runs that commercial. <laughs> Very good. Nice clip. Ed Wood's got nothing on us. Nice clip. Yeah, Chicago wrestling, though, always great stuff. Uh, back to some of these crazy magazines, Billy Wick. Look at crazy. Well, it, Pampiro Firpo. I mean, what a character. You know, one of, the old, one of those old hairy guys. But the cool thing about the photography in these, a lot of them are similar pictures, but you get a little in-ring action. And if you go through some of these different magazines, the cool thing is they'll just, I don't have one queued up in this magazine, but they'll go through a whole match for like a two-page pictorial, and it'll be like comic book style. You'll see the big boot, or you'll see the punch, then you'll see the suplex. And they'll have all the key moments of the match in picture form, kind of mapping out the match like a, like a comic book, because they didn't have the internet, and TV wasn't, you know, these promotions weren't on TV around the country. 
Street. It was the day of the territories. That's where these magazines are so historical. And it's amazing if you look at, like, how the times have changed. Obviously, with the Internet, it used to be if you couldn't get to that show, you would have to wait for, like, a magazine to come out, which, you know, maybe, right. like, two months later before you would get the results of right. that show. Now, as it's happening, there's some jerk with a cell phone videotaping, like, Batista punching Rey Mysterio through the cage or, or whatever, you know? And, like, you find out that night. You can watch it that night. Right. I got home the other night, and somebody's like, you missed Piper on uh, on the Jericho thing? And I just YouTubed Piper, Jericho, Raw, and then the date. And bang, within 30 seconds, I was watching it. Well, I think what it's really made to happen, Billy, is that it's turned up the creativity in the backstage uh, of uh, WWE and in TNA. They have to keep the information fresh. They have to keep the matches fresh. Because in the old days, it used to be like, you would go see Special Delivery Jones fighting Brutus the Barber Beefcake. They'd do that match in Chicago. They'd do it all around the country. And then they'd come around and do the finisher on TV. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And and, and now, they don't, have that, they don't have that luxury. I remember I saw Piper and Hogan wrestle at the old Rosemont Horizon, Allstate Arena, whatever you want to call it, and it was Rosemont a great Horizon. match, and it was they got me fired up by watching the TV show, then I got to see the match live, and then the next month, they kind of did the big blow-off where one guy either won or lost, and we, you know, we got our denouement, as it were. Oh, and that Hulk Hogan. I shake my fist at you, Hulk Hogan, wherever you are. I'm, what? I'm sure you're not watching the show. Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan, he's, a, he's terrible. He's terrible. Uh, yeah. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, check it out. After WrestleMania 25, ooh, a threat. Hulk Hogan is going to be your WWE World Heavyweight Champion. You think so? He's coming back. For one night, and it's it's WrestleMania 25, and it's like the big, you know, quarter of a it's a quarter of a century. You, you, wait, 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 Billy, wait, hold on, slow it down for me and the rest of the fans at home. You're telling me that you think Hulk Hogan, within the next three four weeks, is going to come back at WrestleMania 25, yeah, yeah. April 5th? I'm not a fan of it at all, but here's here's how it's going to go down, and it's going to go down with somehow with, okay, Chris Jericho, you know, he's he's feuding with all the legends. The or legends, whatever. sure. Um, Hulk Hogan just so happens to be a legend, and there's all this talk about Hogan. Nobody knows if he's going to be at Mania or this or that. You watch, you watch. Jericho is going to insert himself into that Money in the Bank match, and then wah, 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 nah, nah, nah. Yeah. he's going to come out at the end, and he's going to he's going to screw the world like he screwed Bret Hart at WrestleMania Nine. You watch, Hogan's going to come out and well, you know, brother Jericho, you put it on the rama. and then the next night on Raw, he's going to give it up. And if they were smart, they would take it all the way to King of the Ring, where they would crown a champion. I mean, slow the booking down, slow the booking down a little bit, make the pay-per-views mean something, but. You do it with Hogan. Well, that, that's what they could do if they didn't have you the internet in a way, though, Billy Wack, because that's what I'm saying about the, the old days. They could do a match one time on TV, kind of get the fans interested in it, and then go around and sell that match around the country for a year or so. And that was money in the bank, and it was you-know-what in seats. And that's a good thing. I, I don't know. I, all I can say is it's nice to do a night where we can just reminisce on good old wrestling. Some of, this, some of these magazines we have are before my time. It's so weird to hold up a wrestling magazine from, say, 1972 and not be able to there's, there's no Ric Flair on these things. I mean, I got a whole stack of 1972 here. And by the no way, Rick yeah, Flair yet. Ric Flair's not the big deal. And he was a darling of these magazines. I don't know if you can tell, but these magazines are, like, in perfect condition. Pretty They're, good. I mean, th like, seriously. And they come to us tonight, compliments of S&J Stereo in Highland, Indiana. If anybody's interested, you can look them up on the Internet. S&J Stereo in Highland, Indiana. Thank you, Jim, for donating all these. And actually, we got quite a few from Chris Hedford brought us in these nice... Uh, these books he's got. And some of these are five times the age of Chris Hedford. Yeah, Chris Hedford, I gotta say, this young man really knows his professional wrestling. Great shot of the, one of the original or one of the earlier Four Horsemen back when Barry Windham was in there. And let's give some props out to Barry Windham, a great wrestler. I think, I don't know if he works backstage for WWE now or not, but I've always been a big fan of Barry Windham and his days in the Horsemen. I thought we were, were a, good, a, a good Were you a fan of the Widowmaker? Yeah, I liked him really? too. I didn't mind him, sure. Now, didn't he have some other well, yeah, he was a blackjack. He was a new blackjack oh, for a the while new there. Blackjacks. I've got those action figures at home, and they're kind of cool. Yeah, it was him and Bradshaw, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The new yeah. blackjacks. You know, I was I was had pitched us a Sam DeSero. He never let me do it. I wanted to have a tag team called the Original Hollywood Blondes. Really? Yeah, the Original Hollywood Blondes. Like after Stone Cold or after Steve Austin and Pillman did it. Mm -hmm. well, I was no, going to no, have I, the Original Hollywood. Blondes. I mean, Blondes. really? I mean, really? You pitched it to Sam, and he didn't go for it? No. <laughs> You know, and, and Hatchet faced the rock and roll monster he did let me do. He let me put a hockey mask on, I won't say who. He let me put a, a Jason, first, uh, one of the, what's the guy from, not Friday the 13th, but the guy from Halloween. 
Michael Myers. Michael Myers. We put a rubber Michael Myers mask on him. Then we put a Jason hockey mask with blood I did myself on it. And then we put on a Cradle of Filth t-shirt, and he was Hatchet Face. There was Hatchet Face, the rock and roll monster, my own creation. I had a ball with that. Really? He's not as well remembered as Braun the Lumberjack, though, is he? What? <laughs> I don't know. Uh... Braun the Lumberjack is quite remembered. I he will. still wrestles. He's wrestling over at uh, WWA or, you know, Vanguard. WWA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, know, you know all those letters. I know you? my independent wrestling around here in this area. That's uh, Franklin. Don't think right that here. I don't. That's Franklin. Yeah? Yeah. That's the split group from Windy City? Correct. All right. Nice guy, but don't trust him with the keys to your gym. Whoa. Or the ears of your rookies. Whoa. I said it. Maybe we'll get some more hits. Stir up a little trouble. <laughs> Nichols H giving us the tornado DDT. Thanks for bringing all the stuff in tonight, though, guys. I'm having yeah. a ball. We were here for about a half hour before we even started doing the show, just screwing around with magazines, playing with Kevin, watching him eat Subway. Our, our what is Kevin? Is he our, inter our intern, I don't Kevin? Know, but he has a very creepy 70s porno mustache. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Well, you do. You do. So just trim it up a little bit, just around the. Get, get, you know, and then you're, you're ready to end it. Oh. But do fun stuff with it before you do, is what I'm saying. You know what? Try not, try the Hitler. Take a look at yourself. See what it looks like. You know, I don't know. It's different. You do got to do different stuff with your facial hair. I don't know. <laughs> Did we get the tornado? Or are we yeah. still Crazy matches from Chicago. Oh. I don't know if I As Dick, he stands on Mulligan's right hand, and he's twisting that left wrist. And here in the opening minutes of the match, Black Jack Mulligan is in a lot of trouble. Lanza gets in there. Crusher sends him out in a hurry. The referee's warning little Broza, telling him not to get in there. Into the rope. A tremendous knee lift by Broza. He covers Mulligan. But Heenan got in, kicked Broza in the head, broke up the pin. It's a one-four match with a 60-minute time limit. A tremendous six-man tag team match. Another knee lift. Again, he covers him. This time, Lanza breaking it up. Here comes the Crusher on the tag. The Crusher and Lanza. Lanza, there he goes, reaching for some object in his trunk. They tie into one another. Crusher forces and lands it back against the ropes. There's a side headlock by the Crusher. Well, the Bruiser every once in a while reaches through and punches the opposing wrestlers. It's the Crusher with a side headlock. They're wrapping the tag team rope around the Crusher's throat. Stick the Bruiser to the rescue. He grabs Mulligan, punches him, sends him to the floor. Now Dick's going after pretty boy Bobby Heenan. Little Bruiser, he loads him. Hayner jumped out of the ring when he saw Bruiser waiting for him. Crusher's caught in the corner. Oh, the Bruiser, little Bruiser bit Hayner and broke that hold up. And here's Crusher kicking Heenan. Now the Bruiser has it. A kick to the midsection by the Crusher. Here comes little Bruiser working on Bobby Heenan. Dick punches Mulligan, who goes to the outside. And that little Bruiser, that tough man, Mulligan punched little Bruiser. Crusher takes over. On pretty boy Bobby Heenan. What a terrific six-man tag team match this is. 
has Blackjack reaching now. They usually uh, removes a piece of metal and slips it in his glove. They're in the corner. Lanza. Well, Lanza couldn't do much because the crusher took over. And the crusher stopped him. With two thumbs right to the eyes. Watch Dick the Bruiser take over. There it goes again. Comes to the eyes. And Lanza. Trying to find his corner. Here's Dick the Bruiser. Watch this now. A punch right to the head. And Dick the Bruiser with a head twister. And lands in trouble. But he's tough. Into the rope. Has that big knee lift to the midsection. Lands is on the mat. Dick the Bruiser standing over him. And Dick grabs that leg. That's that leg that was recently damaged. Heenan broke that up. Now it's Bl Mulligan punching Dick the Bruiser, but the Crusher grabs him. Lanza punching the Bruiser to the throat. Here's Heenan. Heenan and Lanza choking Dick the Bruiser. The Crusher smashed their head together, and he saved the Bruiser. Again, a chokehold and punches to the throat by Blackjack Lanza. And the Dick the Bruiser is up. Boy, this man is tough. Look at Dick the Bruiser. What terrific recuperative power this man has. They're both punching the Bruiser. He stands up there like a sturdy oak tree. Look at him go. Watch Dick the Bruiser. Lanza grabs him. Mulligan, ooh! Dick cut down. And Mulligan punched Lanza. What terrific action. And this great six-man tag team match. Head to the rope. A big backdrop by Dick the Bruiser. The Bruiser takes over our pretty boy Bobby Heenan. To the rope. He hits our table. He's out on the floor. Mulligan, uh, Lanza and the Bruiser fighting on the outside. The Bruiser threw Lanza in there. Here's Mulligan attacking the Bruiser. Whoa, man. What a fight here on the outside of the ring. Dick the Bruiser takes over on Lanza. They crash Mulligan and Lanza's heads together. Pretty boy Bobby Heenan is out. The Crusher takes over on Bobby Heenan. Bobby Heenan's head is badly cut. He throws Lance into the rope. A, a big backdrop by the Crusher. He's got him covered. He just about had a pin, but Lanza managed to get away. Lanza with a big cut on his head. And Heenan bleeding. Oh, man, that blood is just gushing out. What a terrific six-man tag team match this is. What action here. Crusher working on Lanza. And Dick the Bruiser has Mulligan. And they smash them together. More like two express trains colliding. Now it's Bobby Heenan. Heenan is punched to the mat by Dick the Bruiser. Little Bruiser hanging on to Heenan. And all three of them, all three of them thrown together. Man, what a terrific tag team match this is. Now look at this great team of Dick the Bruiser and the Crusher. Now little Bruiser on top of the rope. 
And they've got Mulligan and Bill Bruce to throw it right on top. Mulligan, he had a pin, but it was broken up. Again, now it's big Blackjack Lanza. And watch this. Crusher grabs Little Bruiser, throws him on top of Lanza. And a two count, but Heenan broke it up again. Sensational, dynamic action in this big six man tag team match. There's Little Bruiser. They punch Heenan. Heenan is just about out. One, two, three. Crusher and Dick the Bruiser held him down. A little Bruiser. Oh, wait a minute. Mulligan. Mulligan is attacking the midget wrestler. He crashes him to the mat. And little Bruiser is being kicked by Mulligan and Hayden and Lazar. Little Bruiser is hurt. Crusher working on Heenan. Now Dick the Bruiser has Heenan. He smashes him into the turnbuckle. Little Bruiser has been badly hurt. This little fellow was smashed to the mat by Mulligan. There's the doctor, the club doctor is working on Little Bruiser, and meanwhile, they jumped on Crusher's leg. Crusher is having trouble with that knee. They jumped on his knee, trying to break it. Well, you know, brother, I hope the, the, the Millennium Falcon doesn't come crashing in. Uh, oh, it did. It did. Look at this thing. This thing's great, Richard T. Sam. Huh? What? I love it. It's collectible oh. day here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was, yeah, there was even, yeah, there was even a manager called Gentleman Saul who was Whoa. a Nazi. Look at her. Look at her. She's hot. What's her name? Lovely Rita Bennett. A real fan a real favorite. Fan. Take a look at Lovely Rita Bennett. Lovely Rita. Yes, she is. Courtesy of January 1973. Back in the day. I this mean, back in the, the day. This thing going then. Chris Hed this is from Chris Hedford's collection. Are these scratch and sniff? I, oh, I turned it around just in time, just at the wrong Gain time. Gain weight! Gain weight! <laughs> it's so weird to open up these magazines and just see these, the, the way things have changed. <laughs> what is this, National Geographic? Look at that. Pampiro Firpo. He was a big, hairy dude. Wow. Pampiro Firpo. But yeah, wrestling times have changed, fans. But uh, we here at On the Mat like to document this stuff for you. Uh, we're bringing in a whole night of classic. <laughs> look at Pampiro, the kangaroos even. Bringing in a whole night of classic matches right here tonight on OTM. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've been having a ball as we always do. Some of do. the better matches we've 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 had here. Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I mean, you know, sitting around the control room with Nicholas H. I mean, you know. I mean, these were real barn burners that we've been Nicholas watching. Nicholas H. Tonight. is a real barn burner. He he burns. I, he bet, burns I bet he would burn burning a barn. in the barn. I, I bet, bet he, he would. Nicholas H. Sleeping on a hay and a hay hay bale, throwing out his cigarette. Uh, do you still smoke? Oh. Oh. Throwing out a cigarette. He just has a lit one. No. Oh. Do not smoke All right. Anyway. Kind of like on hee haw. Please quit saying that I go out for a Newport because people are starting to ask questions. Oh, you'd rather fight oh, than really? switch. Is that it? Yeah, I'm saying he didn't go. He doesn't do Newports anymore, fans. He's uh, taken to those clove cigarettes. Uh, he's a ooh. he's a fancy North Sider now. He only smokes clove. I we, actually I quit smoking. Did you really? Uh, you were a Newport man too, I were was you not? Not a Newport man. I was a Parliament menthol full flavor, oh. but I quit on my birthday. We missed my birthday last week, didn't we? Well, happy birthday, well, Billy Wack belated. I had thank mine you. on the ninth. Oh, that's right. To yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pipe whoa, something whoa, extra there for you. Back at Something extra there for you. Pisces. Oh, yeah, that's right, on the I Facebook. Now, surely I digress, but this, he's an oldie but a goodie, so we can bring him up. I can't help but notice when I drive into the Fox River Valley that I've entered what's called Kane County. And it dawned to me that wrestler, or actually uh, referee, Steve Kane, is he one of these guys that got his name from his county? In other words, is his name really Steve Lithuaniets? And then he changed it to Steve Kane because he lives in Kane County. Kind of much like uh, uh, we had a guy at Windy City. He was uh, Muller. Uh, uh, yeah, he was going to be called. He wanted himself to his last name to be Muller, Scott Muller. And Sam told him, no, you're not. Because he liked Man Cow Muller. He told him, no, you're Scott Stern. And he made him be Scott Stern. Wow, really? Yeah, because he, he oh. did, man, Sam, did, Sam, Sam didn't like Man Cow. Prop, Sam wow, did not like Man Cow. All right, all right. Yeah, but what about I'm going to come up with a guy Muller. named Ralph Lujak. 
<laughs> there you go. They gave a, yeah. To, uh, little <laughs> Tommy could be a sidekick. <laughs> we're up. We're almost a poor man's version of that. Okay, we're I, like I, the I, destitute pockets out version of. Yeah. That. Yeah. Oh, but please give to on the mat. That's how bad it is. Well, you know, when I was in L.A. one time, Billy Wack, I actually met El Duce from The Mentors, the man who's credited with, uh, actually, uh, Courtney Love supposedly offered him three grand to off Kurt Cobain. Oh, yeah. El Duce from The Mentors, who's famous for wearing the hoods. He played drums, big fat guy, no him? shirt. Yeah, I met did him. He, did he, he talk he, about the deal? He drooled. He drooled on my shirt. No, he talked about a, I can say urine. He talked about a urine sword fight in Brian Slagle's. Uh, file cabinet at Metal Blades Records. That's what he did. Him and this other guy had a urine sword fight in Brian Slagle's file cabinet. He didn't tell us about all that, but I'll tell you this. El Duce, the, the first time I met him on Hollywood Boulevard, we were buying a mentor shirt, swear to God. My bass player, Russ, comes in and says, Hey, hey, Richard T., El Duce's out on the strip. I'm like, no way. So I go out there with the shirt I just bought. says, my woman from Sodom. He foams up yellow goo as he signs it. And what? it was just, yeah, El Duce. But here's the, here's the, the you, you mentioned the, po oh. the, the pockets turned out thing. This is the best way to tell somebody's destitute. El Duce walks up to us on the street, his pants all the way down, un un his pants unzipped completely, and both pockets turned out. You know he was having a bad day. Wow. When we asked him for his picture, you know what he said, Billy Wack? One picture, one dollar. Really? That's what he said. His image is only worth a hundred pennies, four quarters of ten dimes. <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. It was funny. It was it was quite a, quite an quite an event. But uh, back to pro wrestling. Back to independent sports. Next week we will have more independent wrestling, just like we usually do. And from what I understand, we may even have as in studio guests Tristan Hayes. I said it like Nicholas H. Not Tristan. I said Tristian. Tristian. Tristian Hayes. That's the way. That's the way Nicholas H. says it. Yeah, yeah. Tristian. Tristan Hayes and my soul brother from another mother. My soul brother from another mother, <laughs> Willie the Bomb Richardson. Thank you wow, very much. Wow, and we'll have December back here, which is great. December. December will be back. That yeah, little Not cutie girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we December. gotta prop her up on a pedestal. We we can. We I want to take her home and put her on my mantelpiece and just dust her off every now and whoa, then. Whoa, whoa. I kind of like her. And and, and and next week we're gonna have the full. <laughs> The full, the full Monty? The full Raiders of the Lost Ark weld the souls map behind us and we'll hold up the staff of Ra and the light will shine through, letting us know where the Ark is buried. You kind of remind me of Ra. Really? Yeah, you got that Egyptian god look. Really? All right, yeah, yeah. all right. Somebody go build me a pyramid at once. There you go. The god king, Billy Wack. I'll, I'll take it. That's my new gimmick. Yeah. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Sam. Take that, Mr. We're going to build a pyramid in the ring. Or Xerxes, yeah, I, you. I'm burning you you got that Xerxes thing going on too. You got to get yeah. a make a piercing that goes from your ear to your nose. Oh, those are weird. A couple yeah. nipple what rings. Do, what do you do when you get a you cold? Could, you, you could have Kevin. You could have you could have Kevin and and, and uh, Nick bring you in on one of them things on their shoulders. You know, like in 300. I'm doing a 300 thing here. What can I say? Sorry. I'm picturing a lot of people around here shirtless, and I, I don't know that that's, that's good movie though, nonetheless. If you especially right. if you like wrestling. Right. Did you see The Watchmen? Not yet. I bet you did, though. I did. Did you read The Watchmen? No. Oh, I don't read comic you've books. you got to read. No, it's, it's beyond a comic book. You've got to read it. Is you it won't really? appreciate the movie unless you uh, read the book. Mm. And you'll really, really like the book. I How swear. about if I just get that movie companion and kind of no, take a quick no, no, no. This is one of the approach. This is one of the things you've got. Take, invest the time. Okay. Invest the time. Read the book, I swear. Okay. Seriously. I, a nice lady friend I know has got it. I'll borrow really? it. Yeah, I bought it for her for Christmas. So. Oh, jeez. I'll just borrow hers. There you go. Badonkadonk. <laughs> huh? <laughs> What? Coming no, to the ring. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I spent some time with this young lady this weekend, and I could get all these new words. Sounds dirty. Tell like, us about it. Like redonkulous? What is redonkulous, and where does it come from? I know she didn't come up with it on her own. Redonkulous. Everything that came out of my mouth happened to be redonkulous, and every time I got a little bit bent out of shape, I was told to chillax. Oh, I don't like chillax. Chillax? I do not well, like it, chillax. It sounds like a body spray. I mean, oh, no. Chillax. It sounds like a disease. Oh, shit. Did you, did you see Steve? He's got chillax. Oh, God, no, no. Steve, right. get in the shower. It'll be all right. Kind of like Chris Jericho's body when he comes out. He must be using some chillax on there. It's all shiny. All we've done is talk up. about shirtless guys and body hair. Whoa, well, we watch wrestling. I mean, come on, we watch wrestling. And I mean, I'll be the first to admit, in wrestling, guys that are completely straight, got non-gay males will critique others the way they're dressed. NGMs, they'll by say, the way. They'll sit there and they'll say to you, oh, no, those tights make you look fat. Put on a shirt. Put on a tank top. Sam will do that kind of thing. So I, I, I got used to that. In wrestling, we get used to it. People will critique your body style. If they think you got love handles, they're going to tell you, put on another I, shirt. I, you know what? I, I have to say, like, I have watched uh, wrestling since I was what, one of those. Uh, now, knee high to a grass. <laughs> I was like, going to go there. Any one of those. 
And it was honestly just in the past two weeks, I have noticed that wrestling is starting to look a little homosexual to me. I'm serious. <laughs> I mean, and whatever. Hey, you know, whatever. But seriously, a greased up Randy Orton, a greased up Cody Rhodes, a greased up Ted DiBiase, and they're all just standing there basically yeah, like in their yeah, briefs. Yeah. I mean, hey, I've been watching it for years, but it was like suddenly on Monday, it was like, Whoa, too many men. On here? Too it, many it, men in tights. It just looks weird. It kind of looked weird to me. It know? like bring back ECW, I, where some of the guys wore shorts. You know what a, I mean? It was a little more violent, a little more realistic. Yeah. It had that air to it. And now it's like, because WWE has always been reputed for they don't. If you came from ECW to WWE and you tried to have that look with the, you know, Stevie Richards with mm -hmm. the short pants and stuff, right. or Raven, you know, with the, you know, shorts and the alternative thing, they said no. We got to wear tights. I have no problem at all with gay people. Oh, my God. Me Please neither. do not let me. You, you know. better not be in wrestling but, and have a problem with gay people. But I'm just saying, I just thought, like, the most recent WWE stuff looked kind of homoerotic. Well, we don't want to. We don't want to go there. We could. We could do. We, we, we could probably do a whole show. We could probably do a whole show on uh, reputed gay wrestlers. There's really? that many of them. I'm not going to name any names because I don't want to get blackballed. But if we wanted to, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, Billy Whack. But anyways, I'm telling you, we could probably do a whole hour just on gay wrestlers. And there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> and not just gimmick gay. Not like Adrian Street gay or Goldust gay. I'm talking I don't real think life. Goldust was gay. Think I, about it. If there should be a guy like Goldust in the UFC, and I'm serious. Oh, think about my it. goodness. Some dude comes out, and he's all just like freaky, black lipstick, gold wig, and he's and, and you know what's going to happen? The guy that he's fighting is going to be like, I ain't going to fight that guy. Yeah. He's gay. Yeah. Right. And he's going to forfeit the match, and the gay dude is going to win. All, he's going to go all the way to the top until finally somebody's like, the champion guy is going to be like, I'll, I'll fight him. But he's going to be creeped out the whole time because people are homophobic, and it's just, I don't know, it's retarded. There's no room for that in you professional know. wrestling, and yeah. quite frankly, I don't think there's any room for what you're talking about in UFC, but you never know. Oh, but if I don't you, think there's any room for entertainment in I'm UFC. I'm not even talking about It's two yeah. guys in shorts that beat the holy heck out of each other, and it's really, to me, not very entertaining. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is how, this is how it's going to, this is the this is the evolution of, of, of fighting. <clears throat> kind of like, who, who was one of the first gimmick characters ever in pro wrestling? I don't know, Gorgeous George. Gorgeous George. Gorgeous George. So you see, you had guys in trunks fighting for like an hour or 45 minutes, the matches would go, and finally, they, somebody topped on the scene that was like kind of a character, kind of strange. Bam, like wrestling, poof, there goes like a big, uh, you know, like resurgence and of wrestling. Ticket sales go up. Ticket Andre sales go the up. Giant. Andre the Giant. He'd come into a territory. Up would go the business. The freaky Abdullah you are. the Butcher will claim the same thing, and he's probably right because he was something different. Same thing with the original Sheik. He would come to a territory, he would heat up the feud with whatever babyface they had as champion, and that would sell tickets and put a ASS every 15 inches, just like Jim Ross liked to see. Excuse me, the freakier you are, the more tickets you're gonna sell. What's right, I got a question about the boogie, I got a question about the boogeyman, okay? He's gone, he's done. Boogeyman's gone? gone. I love the boogeyman, I thought he was a great entertainer, and, and, and quite frankly, a gimmick wrestler, like The Undertaker. Maybe not like Val Venus, but kind of like The Undertaker. I don't see why the boogeyman didn't get a little more mileage. He's a decent enough wrestler, puts on a great show. I, I just think he was a great character, and it's a waste of money to just kind of put him to the side. Also, why isn't Shelton Benjamin on here? They got, if we're going to break it down, because Barack Obama's president, right? We got, a, we got a black man as president. And I think we're seeing more featured black people in WWE advertising. You know, look at this. We got 16 guys all together. You got, you got Kay Quick or Ron, or Ron or Truth, our truth however he's going now. You got uh, MVP and you got Mark Henry. But they didn't have room for Shelton Benjamin. They and didn't have room for Kofi Kingston? It, it, well, isn't Shelton Benjamin the United States champion? So why isn't Shelton Benjamin on here? I, it begs the question. I just kind of wonder. I like what they're doing. I like the characters. I'm excited CM Punk's in here. But it just it begs the question. If they're really trying to uh, be uh, you know, user-friendly to the whole country and their whole roster, why didn't Shelton Benjamin make the cut? I don't know, man. But maybe that's a question for another week. In the meantime, we'll see all y'all next week. Hear it on the mat. One, two, three.